Hey, welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. As well as our friends over at Joanne.com. Week number six. This is the icing on top of the cake week. So this is about decorating the afghan to be even more festive. Now pom-poms and tassels are very subjective to your own personal liking. So in certain people they love pom-poms, they can't get enough of it and other people they don't so much. So this part of, this, of the crochet long is really up to you on if you would like to add on your tassels and your pom-poms. Daniel absolutely loves the final look of this because these colors speak to him. It's really quite festive and Jeannie not so much as far as the tassels and the pom-pom. So it's one of those things that you have to decide what is going to work for you. You know here at Joanne.com and the Crochet Crowd we're here just to inspire you but what you do with that inspiration is completely up to you. So that is what we're going to be doing. So let's head on into the studio. Let's make some pom-poms and tassels and we're going to be adding that to the blanket next. So here we are in clue number six and now it's the icing on the cake. Now fringe, tassels and pom-poms are very subjective to your own personal creativity. You can decide to leave them on or take it off. That's up to you but I really think in this particular afghan it's this festive textures afghan. I think it really kind of what makes it awesome. I'm going to be making mine into a wall hanging and what I'm doing is that I'm leaving off the tassels on the top or the fringe at the top and I'm only applying it to the bottom and I'm going to extend my uh, sun soaked here a little bit more and then wrap it around either a stick or a dowel and hang it from the wall. So I've actually done all of my tassel work and my pom poms already in advance and we're going to be uh, showing you those. So I'm going to to take these in order of doing the tassel first, pom pom and then I'll show you how to do the fringe. I think the fringe is the last thing that you should be applying to your um, project. Now you'll notice that the fringe here is really quite beautiful. It's really quite straight. I believe it's been steam blocked in order for it to have that look because when it comes out of a ball it's not as straight. So that's one of those things that you'll just have to get your steamer out and just steam it up a little bit and you'll see it will relax and look perfect each and every time. So let's uh, move on and let's start doing tassels. So for the tassels you can use a five inch piece of cardboard and wrap the cardboard if you want or you can use a tassel maker just like you see this can be found in a craft store. Now they're suggesting that you use a similar color to what the yarn is so that it can hide into the yarn and this here is a stronger yarn than the actual Bernat blanket so when you go to tie it it won't snap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate how to use this project, a product here and then you can decide to use the cardboard as well and that's up to you and there's videos on YouTube if you'd like to do the cardboard version as well. So let's uh, show you how to make a tassel. Okay let's start with your tassel maker. You're just going to use your strong piece of yarn. In my case I use Karen one pound. It's a similar color and just put it into the grooves towards the back side. You're now gonna grab your Bernat Blanca yarn and you're gonna hold it over the top of the of the tassel maker. Let it fall down on the other side and you're going to count your revolutions and it's gonna be 15 and it's same as a cardboard too. So just kind of mind it just kind of go around this piece of strand. It's not locking it in position so you can always move it. So that is considered one rotation, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and 15 and then come down to the bottom. So we're gonna lay it down flat here and let me zoom you out a little bit here. So now what we're going to do is that we're gonna cut the yarn that is leading to the yarn ball and we are going to take the two strands that you see up here and you're gonna pull them out so that they're coming up to the top. And tightly I want you to tie and make sure that you left a long enough strand now that I say that right. So a long enough strand so that you can deal with it later and you're just gonna tie this in two. I always like to tie it at least three times. So once and twice and this is the third time. Just like you see. So don't take it off your contraption yet. I want you, if you're doing the cardboard you will probably need to slide it off but here this tool has a little gapping space and we're gonna use the same strong yarn and just force it down through the gapping space. Okay and then back around to the top and tie that into a knot. Pull it nice and tight. So the idea is that you're using a stronger yarn that's pretty much close to the same color. It's not exact but it's close enough. And tie that a couple times or a few times as well. 
Okay, now that I have that done, I am going to just trim that close to the knot. And that's done. So what else do we need to do? We need to cut off the bottom here. So just leave that one out of the way and just run your scissors through the bottom. Okay, so the bottom is now cut and all you're just going to do is slide it off your contraption like so and your tassel is done. So I'll just, I'll just need, <laughs> all you need to do is that because this is Bernat Blanket yarn, you're gonna wanna bang out these things. So just take it outside and do them all first and then bang them. Now the, the fray will come out just a little bit as you're banging it, but eventually it will stop uh, because of the way that it's manufactured. So all these little pieces that you see here will eventually stop. So what I would do is trim everything first. So just get it close to what you need. And, there, and then take it outside and bang it. So what's with this long string? Let's talk about that next. So if you ever want to wash this afghan, what you want to do is just tie these on to the afghan. So what you're just gonna do is go through a section of the afghan. So one strand is going through one little piece and the other strand is going in the other and just bring it through to the other side and then tie it into a bow tie and therefore it'll hold. And I know you're thinking, you know, if you have kids and it's a bow tie, will it come out up? Probably so, but it's one of those ones that I think this is very de decorative, uh, de and decorative and a bow tie really will hold. So when you want to wash it again, all you just gotta do is un undo the bow tie and then slide these off, toss this into the washing machine and when you're done, you can just reapply them back on and you can use the photograph in order to line it all up. So that's kind of something that you can have even though the designer has got it like this, you can probably decide to do something else with your tassels as far as layout. That's completely up to you. So let's move along and learn how to do a pom-pom. So now we're gonna learn how to do a pom-pom just like you see here. This has already been banged out so all the remaining extra fluff that would follow has been banged out of it. So uh, what you want to do is just shape it and then bang it really good like boom, 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 boom. Don't be uh, cheap about the tru, 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 tru. You give it a really good bang and then all, all the extra fluff will then fall out of it. So it ends up looking like this. So you wanna leave a large strand on it just like the tassels so that you can take it on and off your afghan if you need to and uh, or if you like to fully commit then you can just tie, uh, like tie it right on and then cut the uh, the extra strands and then be done with it. So I'm gonna be using a pom-pom maker today in order to demonstrate how to do this. Okay so here's the pom-pom maker. When you buy it you will notice that it will look like in pieces like this. So you need to have the matching set. Do not lock them into position yet. Just leave them open. So the grooves on the outside here that are indentating upward is going to sit into the um, little pieces here that are having the indent just like that. Okay, so what I want to do, I'm not too worried about this yet, is that I wanna take my strand of yarn and once you start wrapping them, it'll hold these pieces together. And I'm just going to wrap generously around both of the sections that you have. I'm not counting, I'm just eyeing it up. So I want to make sure I go over the top of the extra yarn holding. And so now that it's got enough there, the machine is holding itself together. So what I want to do is that I wanna wrap it enough that it looks like it's full. So I'm not counting, I'm just eyeing it up. These take just a few minutes to make. You wanna do it relatively even so you get an even ball. Okay, once you think you've got enough, you'll want you to head to the middle section and then jump on over so you don't have to restart the next one on its own. So when you just jump over, just kind of turn it around so it's easier for you and just jump right over the hinging area. Put the two together and start this side and start wrapping. So for the tassels, you will need a total of um, nine of those and then for the pom-poms you need a total of 11 if you wanna match the designer's concept. Of course you can make more or less, that's up to you, your creativity. Um, you will notice that you will get to the end of your yarn ball pretty um, by the end of all of this. So if you wanna do extra, you may have to get more yarn. Okay, once you're satisfied with the wrapping of it, you see it's looking nice and thick, we want to close the contraption. So just let's close it and lock it. So then just using the, the locking, just going over top, and over top and now we can trim this yarn going to 
the ball. I want you to grab a, that piece of yarn, that was strong piece and just get it aside, make it extra long and we'll use that in a second. So starting in the gapping space, I want you to run your th scissors through the space. Just let this one fall out of the way. So just, and it will open it up on the outside. So the contraption is holding your pom-pom together at this moment and just run it right through 360 degrees around. Okay, so the machine is holding itself together. So I want you to take the strand and run it through the gap. Just pull it through. Okay, and what I want you to do is just pick it up and get it so that the strand will be even. So just get the strand up. Let me back out the camera a little bit more for you. Okay, so now I want to just tie it in a knot at this moment so that it sink down into the machine and as you pull you'll notice the ball will get tighter. So then I flip it upside down and then I tie again. Then I flip it again. So I do that three times. So this is my third time and then I'm gonna tie one more time. So now I can release my pom-pom out of the machine. So just release the clamps and open it up. you will notice this fluff. Again, you have to bang it out later. So all you're just going to do at this moment is just kind of fluff it up and you can see all the ones that kind of are sticking out more than they should be. So you're just gonna just nicely trim these. Now if I had a sharper pair of scissors, it would be better. And so all I'm just going to do is that I wanna bang these out then because all these fluff that you see coming out here will continue to come out. But if you really give it a good bang, um, like just a really, really good aggressive shake, um, you will notice that all the phrase stuff will actually stop coming out of your of your pom-pom. So now you have your pom-pom complete. So let's just say I banged it. So I banged the other one. So you can see the difference. You can see that the frays are still ready to come out of this one. So you can just shape them, try to get them to the same size and then you have the strand to be able to tie it onto your afghan. So this would be how you would make a pom-pom. So let's uh, continue along and now let's do the easiest part which is the fringe. So let's do your fringe. I have a yarn ball here. I actually pulled out the yarn bar out of the middle of the ball and I end up having all this and that's how I did this one pretty easily. So what you wanna do is you wanna take two strands. So if you didn't have two strands, you could just simply just go 12 and then just double it like this and then you would have your about 12. So I'd go about 13 inches if it were me and I were you. But if you have two uh, strand balls, all you just can do is just take two strands at the same time and just lay them up over top at about 12 inches. And I would do like a whack of them, meaning many, at the same time. It saves you time. And fringing this actually doesn't take a lot of time at all. So now what you're going to do is you're gonna take your strand and divide it in half. Like that. And we get rid of our measuring tape. So it's just equally spaced every other stitch that you see on the end. And now I'm gonna come into the next one. And I come from the bottom, so the underside going to the right side of the project and then I grab onto the two strands and pull those through. Now that I pulled those through, just use your fingers and separate the, the loops like so and then just pull that through. And this will keep the crossing over of that on the front side and just pull snug. Just like that and just move your fingers. So the other one, just continue to move across Again, divide it equally in half and then I'm gonna come into the last one here. Now the fringe you'll have to bang out as well. 
to get that all that loose fiber that is hanging on the end of the cut um, to be stopping to fray and then you'd be good to go as well. So that's awesome. So that would be how you would apply that and then you would use a steamer in order to straighten all these out and this is how you do that. So that's it for the Joanne Stitch Along with my friends over obviously at Joanne and this is the Bernat Blanket Stitch Along. I hope that you enjoyed. Oh make sure that when you do these tassels then or this fringe you're gonna wanna cut that they're all equal at the same time at the end. So make sure you're doing that and this is it and I hope that you've enjoyed and now it's time for a giveaway over on the Crochet Crowd. Just help follow us over in the Crochet Crowd and we'll show you how to enter at that point. We'll see you later. Have a good one and thank you so much for joining us this time. So that's it for now. That was week number six. You can decorate your afghan if you wish or you can just leave it as is. That's completely up to you. At joanne.com and the Crochet Crowd our ideas are just to inspire you. What you do with that inspiration is completely up to you. You are an individual and so are we. So do what makes you happy. Love what you do. And this is a really exciting idea. Hopefully that you've learned some stitches within this particular project that you can carry on into other ideas if you want to try something new in the future. So that's it for now. Extra kudos to, kudos to our friends at joanne.com as well as myself here at The Crochet Crowd. And we hope to see you again real soon and we look forward to seeing your creativity online. Don't forget to use the hashtag of handmade with Joanne. We'll see you again real soon and have a good one. Bye-bye.